Kia ora, good evening. Police are seeking witnesses to a serious unprovoked assault that took place in the Invercargill CBD in the early hours of Saturday morning. The assault took place on D Street near the corner of Don Street at 3.20am as a 26-year-old male was walking with two friends. The unknown assailant struck the victim once, causing him to hit the ground with such force his skull was fractured and bleeding on the brain occurred. The victim was taken to Southend Hospital but due to the seriousness of his injuries, he was transferred to Dunedin Hospital where his conditions described as stable. Police describe the man they seek as a Caucasian in his 40s or 50s, balding of stocky build with a ginger and white beard. Anyone with information is asked to call Detective Tim Cook of the Invercargill Police on 211 or information can be passed on anonymously via Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 111. Meanwhile, police are seeking information about reports of a man in the Tweed Street area over Labour weekend posing as a child, youth and family worker. The man who carried a clipboard approached a man at his residential property and spoke with him about the man's children. He was described as tall and thin, approximately six feet in height, non-European with black spiky hair. Anyone who's been approached by the man or seen a man fitting the description is asked to contact the Invercargill Police or call Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 111. The high number of police on the Southern Police District's road over and lower speed tolerance seem to have worked over the long weekend. There were no serious accidents in Southland despite the increased traffic on the region's highways and roading network. As with other public holidays, police were enforcing a four kilometre an hour tolerance of the speed limit. While last year nationally the road toll for Labour weekend was one, the lowest ever recorded, this year it was three. The official holiday weekend began at 4pm Friday and ended at six o'clock this morning. Vibrant Invercargill may have lost its City Council annual funding of $80,000 in June, but the organisation still lives on through its board of volunteers. Vibrant Chair Philip, Philip Todd says the board's still very focused on the inner city and solving the biggest problem of declining foot traffic. We're, st we're still meeting, we've still got some um, ideas that we want to push through. We're still very keen to carry on with uh, CBD projects that uh, invigorate and, and drive a bit of feeling into passion and feeling into the CBD. We feel it's still sadly lacking. Um, uh, that, that's the sort of direction we want to do, uh, go. Um, unfortunately, we've got to now pick on some projects which are low cost. That um, we've got one coming up which we'll hope to push through council shortly. And uh, if that goes, that'll drive more people into the CBD. It's a, it's a positive move. It costs nobody anything. Um, it might affect the parking revenue slightly, but that's all. What, what is that idea? The idea is that um, everybody in Invercargill that hosts uh, visitors to the city will be able to give a, a small voucher to those people, which will give them three hours free parking on the metered spaces in Invercargill that day. Most of those people check out at 10 o'clock, so the, the parking will be between 10 o'clock and maybe 3 o'clock. If we can get those people to stay three years longer, it's, it's going to be a great thing for the town, get more people wandering around the town. Yeah. Has this worked elsewhere? Is this a model or is this a vibrant concept? It's, it's a vibrant com concept. We've, we've thought it up through our board. It is, uh, uh, Nelson has gone to free parking certain times of the day. Other cities are doing things to try and get people into the CBD. They're, they're trying all sorts of things. We've driven around. If you drive around the CBD certain times of the day, half the parks are empty. Um, and we need to fill them up with people. We need to get people on the streets, foot traffic. And How is that board, uh, having lost that funding, are there, is there still a lot of energy going on there? There's still a huge amount of passion from people that really believe in Invercargill. You know, they're not about doing it for their, um, it's nothing to do with They self. never were paid, of course. Never were, never have been paid, um, never taken anything out of it. We did have a paid coordinator who did a lot of work. But these guys do it for the passion of wanting to see this place a better place to live and play in. It's, it's simple as that. Getting one of the South's most iconic galleries up to opening standard could take some time, according to City Councillor Lindsay Thomas. Reports commissioned to bring the neo-Georgian homestead Anderson Park up to an acceptable earthquake standard show costs could reach close to $900,000. The decision of whether to reinforce existing chimneys or to replace them with imitation ones is yet to be decided, as is the degree of earthquake strengthening to be undertaken. Quantity surveyors 
has provided the initial estimate, which includes outside maintenance and a paint job, but this could change once work is put out to tender. Invercargill City Council are awaiting Heritage New Zealand and the Anderson Park Art Gallery Board's approval of plans. It's unknown how long the gallery will remain closed. The 89-year-old homestead cost £10,000 to build and has been closed since January this year. Stay with us still to come on the bulletin, Sir Tippany O'Regan on warm homes and energy efficiency. Welcome back. Entering the electronic world of Facebook was a new journey for a number of seniors at the Invercargill Library today. Greats and Grands Month is almost at an end, but not before some online tutoring for those interested in keeping in touch with friends and family. Over a dozen women took lessons on how to join to Facebook, how to keep security in check and how to connect with friends. The one hour lesson helped set senior students up so they can share experiences, plus post comments and photos. A senior's Skype class is scheduled for tomorrow, also at the library. The library have had several of these sort of programs which have been great for a lot of folk. This seems to be particularly popular with the females here today though. Yes, it is a bit, isn't it? <laughs> Not sure whether the men don't read the newspapers or whatever, but possibly the women um, communicate with families more. I don't know, maybe that's the reason, but certainly nice to see a good crowd turn out. Is it likely that's going to be an ongoing thing? You mean this session? I'm, I'm hopeful it is. Senior Net do run open days and things too, so people should be asking for help so they can get onto online and view their families on the other side of the world. Director of Aorua Synergy, Sir Tiffany O'Regan, was in the city today for a special presentation on the benefits of healthy, dry, warm homes and alternative energy sources. Sir Tiffany's Aorua Runanga own Aorua Synergy, an enterprise he takes a special interest in. Well, there are others do this sort of uh, exercise. We're doing it today because we're trying to promote uh, the uh, conversation and the debate and the awareness of this sector. We're not, although we've got some preferred suppliers of equipment, uh, which we're pretty keen on, we think that we've learnt a bit about this now. We've been doing it for a while, uh, and uh, uh, we. Uh, just believe that it's a subject that uh, the lives of Southlanders and indeed to Waipainama, the South Island, could be very considerably improved. One of our areas of interest is in particularly the rural sector and farm buildings and things like that up through uh, Southland and Otago. And we're pretty keen to develop our activities in that line and there's quite a lot of uh, interest from those areas. We've been discussing the prospect of a, um, opening an agency or an office in Queenstown, for instance. Uh, but all of our interest has been in uh, really using high quality product to get uh, uh, improved use of the energy that we now have and with all the benefits uh, that come with that. It started with insulation, didn't it? I think Insula in 2008. It's all yes. about health. It, well, that was all about health healthy component. homes. Was all about uh, um, healthy homes. Was all about insulation and warmth, and just raising the general uh, domestic level of domestic um, uh, uh, warmth and the, all the health benefits and so on that came with that, and lowered cost. We're all. We all know how expensive housing is further north in Auckland and that sort of thing, but if you look at the housing stock down here, a lot of people are paying a lot more energy, aren't they? To well, they pay a lot more energy and quite a lot of the housing stock is old and uh, uh, very much in need of retrofitting of these sorts of things, which are standard on new buildings, or much easier to put into new buildings. So we are very much engaged in the whole retrofit. So I, th I think I've been told that 5,000 houses so far have had something done in South and yeah. out of 39,000, that's, that's not too bad. It's a, well, it's a pretty good start and uh, we're, we're keen on growing the idea but we think these, this whole sector will only grow if there's a more informed and developed conversation about it. What would you like to see in the next 10 years that that, that well, I'd just like to see that conversation going on, the growth occurring and 
uh, just a more sustainable and better use of the energy we have in our communities. It's not cheap to do some of this work though, is it? No, it's what, not. What help and, and for those? Well, there's a range of subsidy things available, and there's a range of things. That, that's all at the margin, really. The basic idea is to see the positives and for people to say that uh, this is an investment which is worth making. And think proactively, I'm just talking here in the last half hour, I've learned not to dry my clothes inside and things like that because yeah. it adds water to the air. There's some simple well, the, things the, that people can do. There's a whole do. lot of things to do with um, modifying your lifestyle in these terms. And uh, yeah, and uh, that's all part of the same conversation to which I refer. You're obvious an, obviously an advocate for this sort of technology. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, But I'm doing what I do because there's my little rune under this doing it. Exported goods fell 3% in the September quarter. This comes on the back of a 7.5% fall in the June quarter this year, while imports rose 3.7%. Butter, milk powder, cheese, along with logs, wood and wood articles led falls over both quarters. This is the first quarter since September 2014, where, since, sorry, September 2013, where exports to Australia have been greater than those to China. Capital goods led the rise in imports, mainly influenced by the imports of large aircraft in the September quarter. The seasonally adjusted trade balance was a deficit of $1 billion or 8.6% of exports for the September quarter according to Statistics New Zealand. Sport follows shortly. Today we have highlights from the ITM Cup Premiership and Championship, Championship Finals. That's after the weather next. From the news team, good night.